Well, hello, <laughs> it's Cat and uh, I'm here to read a story for you today from Dr. Seuss, of course. <laughs> so, story time with the cat in the hat, if I ran the circus. Ooh. In all the whole town, the most wonderful spot is behind Sneelock's store in the big vacant lot. It's just the right spot for my wonderful plans, said young Morris McGurk, if I clean up the cans. Now, a fellow like me, said young Morris McGurk, could get rid of this junk with a half hour's work. I could yank up those weeds and chop down the dead tree and haul off those old cars, there are just two or three, and then the whole place would be ready, you see. All ready to put up the tents for my circus. I think I will call it the Circus McGurkus. The Circus McGurkus, the world's greatest show on the face of the earth or wherever you go. The Circus McGurkus, the cream of the cream. The Circus McGurkus, the circus supreme. The Circus McGurkus, colossal, stupendous, astounding, fantastic, terrific, tremendous. I'll bring in my acrobats, jugglers, and clowns from a thousand and thirty-three faraway towns to the place that you'll see them in, ladies and gents, right behind Sneelock's store in the great McGurk tents. And I don't suppose old Sneelock will mind when he suddenly has a big circus behind. After all, Mr. Sneelock is one of my friends. He might even help out doing small odds and ends. Doing little odd jobs, he could be of some aid, such as selling balloons and the pink lemonade. I think 500 gallons will be about right, and then I'll be ready for opening night. What an opening night! What a night! What a sight! I'll hoist up the curtains, the crowds will crowd in, and my circus McGurkas will promptly begin. With a welcoming toot on my welcoming horn, by my horn-tooting apes from the jungles of Jorn, where the very best horn-tooting apes are all born. Cause the very fresh air there is fine for the lungs, and some of those fellows have two or three tongues. This way, step right in. This way, ladies and gents. My sideshow starts here in the first of my tents. When you see what goes on, you'll say no other circus is. Half the great circus, the Circus McGurkis is. Here on stage one from the ocean of Ulf is a sight most amazing, a walrus named Rolf, who will stand on one whisker, this wonderful Rolf, on the top of five balls, two for tennis, three golf. It's a marvelous trick, if I say so myself. And on stage number two, here is something quite new. From a country called From comes the drum-tummied Snum, who can drum any tune that you might care to hum. Doesn't hurt him a bit, cause his drum-tummy's numb. And you'll now meet the Foon, the remarkable Foon, who eats sizzling hot pebbles that fall off the moon. And the reason he likes them red hot, it appears, is he greatly enjoys blowing smoke from his ears. Of course, pebbles like this are quite hard to collect, but Sneelock will manage somehow, I expect. After all, Mr. Sneelock is one of my friends, and I'm sure he'll help out doing small odds and ends. And on stage number four, see the wily Waloo, who can throw his long tail as a sort of lasso. With a flip of the hip with a tail of this kind, he can capture whoever is standing behind. He can capture old Sneelock, I'm sure he won't mind. And now here is Hoodwink, who winks in his wink hood. Without a good wink hood, a hoodwink can't wink good. And folks, let me tell you, there's only one circus with wink hooded hoodwinks, the Circus McGurkis. The show of all shows. There's no other showman who shows you a show with a blindfolded bowman. The blindfolded bowman from Brigger Barut, the world's sharpest shooter. Look at him shoot through the holes in four donuts, two hairs on a worm, and the knees of three birds without making them squirm. And then on through a crab apple up on the head of Sneelock, who likes to help out, as I've said. And now come to this spot where the spotlight is hot, and you'll see in the spotlight a juggling jot, who can juggle some stuff you might think he could not, such as 22 question marks, which is a lot, also 44 commas, and also one dot. That's the kind of a circus McGurkis I've got. But that's just my sideshow, a start, a beginning. This way to the big tent, you'll find your head spinning. Why, ladies and gentlemen, youngsters and oldsters, your heads will quite likely spin right off your shoulders. So hurry, step lively, quick, ladies and gents, and get into your seats in my tent of all tents. My parade of parades is about to commence. 
You'll see Drum Major Sneelock fling-flang his baton on my organ magorgan magurkus. Come on! With its hot steaming pipes of gold brass-plated tin, snorting all sorts of snorts in a bumbling den. That is super stupendous, stumendous, stuororous. And when I play Dixie, please join in the chorus. Then a fluff-muffled truffle will ride on a huffle. And next in the line, a fine flummox will shuffle. The flummox will carry a lurch in a pail, and a fibble will carry the flummox's tail. While on top of the flummox, three harp-twanging snarp will twang mighty twangs on their three-snarper harp. While a bolster blows bloops on a three-nozzled bluzer, a nolster blows floops on a one-nozzled noozer. And then comes a lion who's partly a trout. Then more stuff for 45 minutes about... And then behind them, then, while everyone stares, come my two and fro marchers, who march in five layers. The fro's march on twos, and the twos march on fro's. Don't know how they do it, but that's how it goes. And now comes an act of enormous enormance. No former performers perform this performance. This stunt is too grippingly, slippingly frightening. Down from the top of my tent like grease lightning. Through pots full of lots of big stickle brush trees. Slides a man, what a man, on his roller skate skis. And he'll steer without fear, and you'll know at a glance that it's Sneelock, the man who takes chance after chance. And he won't even rip a small hole in his pants. And now here in this cage is a beast most ferocious, who's known far and wide as the spotted atrocious, who growls, howls, and yowls, the most blood-curdling sounds, and each tooth in his mouth weighs at least sixty pounds, and he chews up and eats with the greatest of ease things like carpets and sidewalks and people and trees. But that great Colonel Sneelock is just the right kind of a man who can tame him, I'm sure he won't mind. Then I'll let Sneelock off for a few minutes' rest, while high over your heads you will see the best best of the world's finest, fanciest, breezy trapezing, my Zuma Zoop troop from the West Upper Bendizing, who never quite know, while they zoop and they zoom, whether which will catch what one and who will catch whom, or if who will catch which by the what or just where, or just when and just how and which part of the air. Ay, ay, what a circus, my circus, McGurkis. My workers love work, they say. Work us, please work us. We'll work and we'll work up so many surprises, you'd never see half if you had forty eyeses. And now, again Sneelock, brave Sneelock is back, risking life on my patented life-risking track, while the speedsters I call my colliding collusions race round in swift cars called abrasion contusions. And Sneelock just lies there, not one bit excited. I know he won't mind. He'll be simply delighted. And here, in a contest of brute strength and muscle, Kid Sneelock, my champ of all champs, will now tussle and wrestle a beast called the Grizzly Ghastly, and slap him around, then he'll slap him down fastly, and pin both his shoulders tight flat to the mat. Kid Sneelock will love it, I'm sure about that. And while that goes on there, look at this go on here. Have you heard of my herd of through horns jumping deer? Every deer jumps through horns of another pell-mell, while his horns are jumped through at the same time as well, by a deer whose horns also are being jumped through by another who's having his horns jumped through too, which I'm sure trainer Sneelock can train them to do. Then the whole tent will ring with hoorays and wild shouts when I wheel in my whales and they turn on their spouts. First my whale number one with an aim that aims true spouts a spout that spouts Sneelock to a whale number two. And then whale number two spouts his spout like a gun and that spout spouts old Sneelock right back to whale one. And then forwards and backwards on spout after spout my great spout rider Sneelock gets spouted about just as long as the water they're spouting holds out. Then my tournament knights, noble apes without fears, Sir Hector, Sir Vector, Sir Bops, and Sir Beers, Sir Hawkins, Sir Dawkins, Sir Jocks, and Sir Jeers, clatter into the tent, and while everyone cheers, stage a roustabout joust with their boxing glove spears. And while all this wild ruckusing goes on below, at the top of the tent, look! The star of my show, great daredevil Sneelock, the world's bravest type. He comes pulled through the air by three Subrian snipe, on a dingus contraption attached to his pipe, and while people below are all turning chalk white, all biting their fingernails off in their fright, great Sneelock soars up to a terrible height. 
Then he shakes himself loose. He starts down in a dive, such as no man on earth could come out of alive. But he smiles as he falls, and no fear does he feel. His nerves are like iron, his muscles like steel. And he plunges down, down, with his hair still combed neat, 4,692 feet. Then he'll land in a fishbowl. He'll manage just fine. Don't ask how he'll manage. That's his job, not mine. Why, he'll be a hero. Of course he won't mind. When he finds that he has a big circus. A big circus behind. <laughs> Delightful book. Oh, my goodness, yes. If I write the circus by Dr. Seuss, as read to you today by the cat in the hat. Join me again next time. We've got more books to read. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, let's see. Let's see the pictures again.